uh, we're looking at the petroleum industry bill. We're looking at some of the issues that have actually come up. And this is because of what's happening on a, more, on a global scale. We know oil prices have been falling and have fallen in the last six months. And it's become a source of concern for a lot of people. Now we also know that the petroleum industry bill, uh, about 15 years ago, was one of um, um, the, the strong talking points as regards uh, ensuring that the oil industry, the oil and gas industry, is put on a much more uh, interesting and level playing field for all parties concerned, international oil companies as well as uh, the domestic investors as well. Mm. Introduce as much as possible local content. That was actually one of the major things that the bill sought to highlight. Well, I'm going to be talking about this on the program with uh, Mr. George Itomi. He's uh, an oil and gas lawyer and um, a former chairman of the Lagos, uh, business, Lagos branch of the Nigeria Bar Association. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Itomi. Good morning. Thank you very much. Welcome Harriet. to the program. Thank you. Well, I know we've had this conversation before, and I remember telling you that I was going to have you back in the studio again to talk about it. So let's look at it from where we are now. It's an interesting position, if you ask me, because um, so many things could easily have been avoided for us, you know, before we got to this stage. Oil prices have now come down. There's so much pressure, even on the local currency. If you heard me talking to Mr. Harrison this morning, he said uh, the Naira at the moment is about 189 Naira, 50 cobalt a dollar, and it's expected to drop further. If the petroleum industry bill, for instance, had been passed before now, would all of the scenarios that were seen on the domestic scene, at, at least, been avoided? Substantially, it could have been avoided. I mean, not completely, uh, but clearly we didn't do all the things we should have done. And it's a pity that um, when you scream your voice hoarse in this country and you expect that um, those who should do something about it should be listening. Um, somehow just toy with everybody's future. Now, this is the future. This is the fear we have all expressed all these years, for so many years now. Um, we've been raising concern about the lack of investment in the oil and gas sector, uh, knowing that this is the mainstay of the economy. Uh, the, PI has been, it, the PIB has been in the works for nearly 15 years, from conceptualization to the point where we now have it as a bill. And somehow, for something that lays the golden, the goods that lays the golden eggs, nobody seemed concerned because oil prices were, if you ask me, artificially high. And everyone who knew, industry watchers knew that you couldn't have this forever. So that was the time for most of us to make hay as it were. Now we've lost over a hundred billion dollars in investments by the IOCs in the sector because of the uncertainty about the legal and regulatory framework. Now, that sort of money is over three or four times your total reserves. Um, and that's a big pity. We've deprived ourselves of new technology that um, normally comes with uh, high um, technology-based industries like the oil and gas industry. And don't forget, there are new alternative uh, fuels coming up. Um, I don't know if you are following the hydrogen car that's coming up. They were already in addition to the hybrid. So there are alternatives that are coming up to the point where oil will just simply become one of those sources of uh, energy. So why haven't we, why didn't we do all we should do to protect this very critical industry and all it just needed was for us to play our own part which is create the enabling environment to make it work and to do that you needed to look at the PIB let's look at the background before the PIB everything all our legislations to do with uh, oil and gas activities were found in various pockets of different rules regulations uh, enabling laws which created too much uncertainty the PIP, therefore, was seen as one document, one composite document, where all these would be captured to create not just the incentive, but the fiscal regime to make it possible for investors to come and work the industry. Critically, it was also designed for the NNPC to stop 
playing the role it's playing now, which is simply like a receptacle for receiving funds um, explored by other IOCs, but to become a player themselves. So that was the grand and noble design of the PIB. But then look but, at the grand and noble design. Yeah. A, lot of, um, a lot of international companies actually faulted it because they looked at the, 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 legal, the legal aspect to have um, kind of wanting to, to wanting to choke them to want to make them lose so much profit because they were looking at their top and bottom line and they said the bottom, in fact, the top, yes, the bottom line was going to be remarkably affected because some of the, um, some of the, the, the ideals or the regulations as contained in the bill were not favorable for them. And apart from them also, we also had some other aspects, some other aspects being con con contested by, you know, other parts of the country that do not actually have oil being, you yeah. know, extracted from them. Sure. But the concern for the international oil companies that actually operate, you know, on our soil was that these this laws were too, were too, was too clumsy. And at the end of the day, it wasn't going to profit anybody. Yeah, sure. But don't forget, when the initial version of the bill was released, this was their position. And many of us sympathize with them. So but over they had, the years, they've had this argument. No, and had, we've had the opportunity to come to the table to talk about it because... So a lot of people saw this coming. A lot of people saw a situation where we're going to have oil prices drop to, the where, to where it is at the Absolutely. moment. So why didn't we look at the legal aspect and fine-tune it so that it would be a win-win situation for all parties well, concerned? Well, don't forget, whenever you propose legislation, it is almost as if you are, like you are negotiating. So the initial bill came out, and all the vested interests began to look at their various positions. Now... The most critical, if you ask me, of these positions well, it was the position of the IOCs, because in the end, they are the ones who are working in your industry. And it was a fiscal regime. Now, that's been negotiated substantially to the point where we, near, we have close to an agreement. We actually have close to an agreement. A lot of the rough edges over the years have been smoothened out. But if you ask me, what has largely kept it unresolved have been our own local play. Um, the issue of whether you should add another 10% to the host communities. Um, from the point of view of the non-oil producing communities, it was, okay, if you're giving uh, something to the host community, then give something to us. Again, that sharing mentality, which prevents us from looking at a larger picture, came to play. And it was so sad to see that our legislators did not look beyond today. And in the heat of all these oil prices, it didn't drop um, suddenly. It's been progressively coming down. And everyone who knew was at its right place, right price, and was going to find itself at some point. It's still going to drop a little further. But why we didn't do it still beats my mind. And I remember one of these uh, programs, I did say that Nigerians, you have the power. We're going to elections. Ask your legislators, why didn't you do this? I mean. I always see good in things. Maybe in the end, we should begin to think ourselves less and less uh, of an oil economy and begin to look for alternatives. We, many of us have been advocating this for a long time. Even the Ministry but, of Finance Yeah, as well. but it does, simply doesn't remove the fact that our legislators have been very delinquent. Okay, so in, in, in a situation like this, yeah. will, it be, will it be legal, you know, based on the operational and economic realities that we have on ground now, to remove some aspects of the bill? For instance, the part that seeks to optimize a domestic gas supply for the power and industrial sectors and pass it. Yeah, that's what some of us are advocating now. Maybe just begin to take them in little clusters and begin to pass them. But we're running out of time. Um, even though the House rules and Senate rules uh, provide for continuity when um, one Senate or one House ends, the Constitution is an impediment. Section 64 says that once the life of the National Assembly ends, it's dissolved. And what that really means legally is that um, it's, new, it's, it's, it's new business. So which means the bill or part of it is not passed now. It would have to be reintroduced, which is really going to be a very, very sad spectacle. So this is the time again we appeal to the patriotism of our legislators to go back. What you find contested, uh, too, too, too heavily contested, you can shop. We need the gas aspect of it passed because it's going to impact on power. And we see what's going on. The power industry is suffering today. 
because the gas regime, which is a feedstock for power, is not there. So for how long do we have to go in this sort of cycle that leads us to nowhere? The IOCs will invest. Oil is their own bit, but don't forget too, they're also in the forefront for looking for alternative sources of energy. But then you see some so, of them already divesting and selling <coughs> off some of their assets and leaving the country already. Yeah. So in, in the eventuality that we still have uh, this uh, issue on the table still sure. containing this uh, PIB is still uh, hanging, do we expect to see more of such companies sell off their uh, assets and leave? Well, the decision whether or not you leave or stay depends. It's a business decision. If you feel a particular environment is not profitable enough for you to leave, you go. But the challenge for us is to up our game because the NNPC issues begin to explore for oil like everybody else is doing, like Petronas is doing, like Petrobras is doing, and all that. So that you mop up a lot of these assets that are being left by these um, um, IOCs. There's nothing that says that technology is the exclusive preserve. But what we must stop is being lazy and simply being receptacles for receiving the hard sweat of other people. Okay, so it's, not going to it's not going to happen forever. 